good night, everyone. Um, can you all hear me from there? Yep, all good, clear. Okay. Um, it's a it's a pleasure and honor um, to to see um, students um, coming to attend. Um, and I always believe that I think the the greatest investment um, anyone can can give is an investment in self, um, an investment in learning. Um, so um, we'll begin, and I'm going to start. Um, so hi everyone. Um, my name is Alexis Ezekia. Um, I am an alumni of Divine Word. Um, I graduated in 2020. Um, my era was from 2019 to uh, 2016 to 2019. Um, I graduated um, with a bachelor's in Papua New Guinea studies and international relations. Um, and tonight, basically, I will be sharing an um, integration of um, basic um, skills or thoughts in research and how how that has um, gone on to shape um, my career. So I will be speaking from experience and integrating a bit of my experience, which I believe is, is in, important for um, students um, just to share my perspective. And I hope that what I will share tonight will help you um, develop your career roadmap, develop your goal, and also see research as something that um, will be of, of a help to you. I think um, nowadays in various organizations, research is um, something that employees, most employees in the workforce um, are looking out for. Um, so basically tonight, um, I will be talking on research and its role in shaping a successful career, my reflections on skills, attributes, and attributes developed at Divine Word. After I finish the presentation, um, we will then go into sort of like um, a, a session where any one of you can ask questions um, regarding um, my work, how I got um, my first job, um, what skills are important to learn as a student. Um, so we will touch on that later. Um, so um, I graduated in March 2020, and then I got my first um, job while I was still doing my final year. And um, that was because of the skills I learned um, in my first year um, in academic um, skills, um, which was a unit, and then the research skills that I developed in uni that also helped me um, get my job. Um, at present, I am the monitoring and evaluations assistant for the United Nations um, Population Fund um, in the Papua New Guinea country office. And um, we are providing um, technical support, advice, as well as um, donor support um, to the government and the, the people of Papua New Guinea. Um, in university, I also served as the SRC executive um, secretary in 2019. And then later, um, I was the com ComDev rep or community engagement rep in um, the following year. So uh, I would like to, um, before diving in, I would just like to thank um, the Center for Learning and Teaching, um, C CLT, for, for arranging this talk um, in co collaboration with um, the SRC. Um, now a lot um, in Mosby and in various parts of Papua New Guinea, um, career development skills are, are something that you pay for um, to, to attend, to learn how to write a CV, to, to learn how to apply research, um, basically to do anything nowadays. It costs money, but I think the, the Center for Learning and Teaching is doing a really great job um, at Divine Word in um, developing your skills. <clears throat> So let's jump right into it. So I will be basing my talk around uh, a major question. So this question is what, what shapes a successful career? Okay, what shapes a successful career? And when we talk about success, um, please note that everyone has their own definitions of success, okay, depending on how how they measure success or how you measure success. Success to, the, to you would be getting an A. Um, success 
to the person sitting next to you would be probably getting a B or submitting an assignment. And the other person who is in final year, success to him might be passing um, the interview for your first job. So when we when we try to define success or what what shapes a successful career, um, it comes back to you as a student. How do you define success? Um, does success mean whatever that how you define success comes back to how you see yourself in the next five years? So having um, an academic goal as well as a career um, plan is also important. So. I will not be talking about success in particular, but I will be talking about what you need to um, to be able to have to define um, how you measure your own success. And I think by defining your own um, academic goals, I think it will lead you to to the success that you have in mind ultimately, which will help you um, choose the type of career that you want to venture into. So. Um, research and its role in shaping um, in shaping a career. So reflecting on the skills and attributes developed develop at Divine Web. Now, I will be picking out um, three key um, phrases that I got from the topic that was given to me. I will be talking about research, um, the roles the role research plays in shaping your career and the, the skills and attributes that you gain by learning to do research. And then these skills and attributes um, will help you to, to find a good career and also be able to enter the job market. Um, because at this point in time, we have a lot of university graduates um, graduating from the different universities. And one of the challenges that um, their finding is looking for a job. But from the perspective of employers, another challenge that employers are trying to find is trying to find a suitable candidate to fill the position. Um, and these exercises cost money. So having, having a good um, background in research and developing that research mindset will position you in a unique area where will where it will put you in the top 10% or 1% when you sit in an interview room. Um, later on, I will discuss how that plays out. So as we dive further, um, um, I want um, you to pay attention so that you can ask questions. So research, um, it improves your overall skills. Um, it gives you the edge in your career and academic work, okay? And it, I think it helps you um, listen and observe those around you. And it is important because when you listen and observe um, those around you, it, it helps you make informed um, decisions, okay? So effective um, career research also allows you to get a more complete um, understanding of the opportunities and it it also opportunities and um, judgment which you will make to find the most ideal job. Um, and it also helps you to it helps you in learning to effectively carry out research that will enable you to get a complete um, understanding of your opportunities and judge um, which one is most ideal. So in 20, 2019, 2019, I was um I was sitting in MM2, MM2 building, which is at the back. Um, I think that's where the MBBS are using it at the moment. Um, it was on May 15, and we were preparing for our final um research presentation. Um and then I got a call. I got a call that um, I was selected um, to undergo this graduate program. So the backstory is that prior to the graduate program coming out and applying, um, I went and I did research 
Okay, I did research on the background of the, the organization I was applying for. I looked at the management. I looked at um, the different roles in that agency, in that organization. I looked at the service lines of the business. And then I prepared myself um, for the assessment for the graduate program. So that is why having that research mindset, um, developing that skill, um, I, I would say it will help you get that job. Um, and for, for those of you in final year and in third year, um, I would strongly encourage you to start researching which company you, you want to go to, start calling them, um, keeping an eye out for the graduate programs and learning by heart um, their objectives and their mission statements. And this is what um, research does. It helps you um, stay on top. And in the end, when when the opportunity comes out, I guarantee you, you will be there in the, the interview room um, because of having that research mindset. Now, um, <clears throat> research skills, um, they help strengthen your CV and, or resume, and they make you more competitive um, academically and professionally. Um, in, the, in the current market, in the current um, job market, um, if you have a strong research background, um, it can open many doors um, for you. So many organizations now, they have, um, they have research units. So they have researchers embedded in their um, organizations. Some, some organizations now have innovation and research departments um, for the business community. Um, business companies have a business intelligence analyst, um, which is a role that um, if you strongly do research or, or in your academic career, um, when you go into an organization, it doesn't matter if it's a medical organization, if it's a business organization, if it's a government organization, or if you want to be an academic, um, having that research background will really put you in a good position to get the job. So research can help you also over time develop your um, accuracy, speed, and reliability, um, which are what employers are looking out for as well. Um, research will help you also with critical thinking, um, project management. Um, what it will do, do is that when, um, from my experience, when I was doing my data collection for my, um, I think at the, the end of third year, going into fourth year, um, what it will help you with project management is it will help you create a timeline of what needs to be done. And it will also help you um, negotiate with um, organizations. I want to come and do research in your organization. Will you allow me? That's where the negotiating component comes. And then the communication component comes in when you, when you try to establish communication with the organization to do your research. So research in itself um, helps develop some very critical skills that organizations and big companies are looking for. Um, it also helps you with being an effective note taker, um, your problem solving, and it helps you being a more um, collaborative and independent um, worker. So most institutions now and companies, when they're looking at a potential um, employee, they will put you into assessments, or we say assessment centers. And what happens is that they will give you a range of tasks, tasks ranging from how do you perform independently and tasks how you perform in a group. So if you, you can be a good, um, ac academically, you can perform well alone, but if you cannot work in a group, then that also is a red flag. So research helps you bring out that component of you working alone, but it also helps you working with other colleagues and your classmates when you work together. And, and it will show, um, that's what most HR um, people look for is employees, who are both strong independently and strong um, collaborating with um, your fellow um, workers as well. <clears throat> so the, the role of research in shaping careers. Um, I think to me, research is, is a very important um, tool. And I would say if, 
if I were to come back to Divine Word to probably do another study, I would work on developing more specialized research skills. So research helps with ex with developing you into having having excellent communication skills. It helps you with your influencing and negotiating skills. It helps you with courage and confidence. So when you are doing your research in the end of third year, uh, you will be asked to go to organizations. You will be asked to submit letters. Then you will have to follow up those letters. And some of the people you will be interviewing are managers, um, analysts, um, senior accountants, um, scientists. So it helps you develop that component of um, having the confidence to speak as well. And the end um, goal of research is having results or driven or results um, based decision making. And that is a very important component and it is a very important skill to learn. Um, when you do your um, academic research, you perform or you, you interpret um, figures, um, statistics, um, same, same in the, the market as well. When you want to make decisions, you, you have results based um, decisions from numbers and figures. And, re, um, and what it does is that it helps you develop that um, numerical acumen as well. And of course, having a curious mind. Um, having a curious mind as well is something that will help you excel in your career. Um, when you're in a company, or when you're in an organization, and having that curious mind will, will set you above the rest in a way that it helps you work on um, tasks or it helps, it, it shows the manager that you want to do, you want to learn. And in doing so, you will ask for a lot of work. They will give you a lot of work, but it also shows that you have a curious mind and you are worth somebody investing in investing with. So um, some of the skills and attributes as previously discussed that um, every um, student should strive to achieve or at least try to practice is um, speed, um, speed in terms of um, how fast you can interpret, um, turnover time of assessments, your accuracy and reliability um, in working with numbers, in, in getting things done. Um, when you're in a group um, and when your group leader gives you work, they are relying on you. And if you don't do it, it makes the whole group, um, it makes the whole group look bad. And then it goes back to whoever is responsible for the group um, to do that work. And in the real in in the real world, it can cost you your job. Um, if somebody relies on you to do an assessment, do a task, and you don't do it, um, it, it could also have fatal um, implications in the real world. Um, at times, they will send you for counseling, or they can even ask you if they can take you off the project, put you to something that is less engaging. But then they lose trust in you as well. So the um, accuracy and reliability are attributes that that um, a potential employee should have. And then, of course, having that critical thinking mindset um, to be able to critic issues, um, project management, how do you manage projects, or how do you manage the little tasks? And then effective note-taking is also an attribute um, that while my time in Divine Word, I think that has helped me as well, um, taking notes. So if they ask you to take notes, um, count that as a blessing. Um, but I'm not saying that um, if you're a group leader, you should always um, give the same person to take notes. And then, of course, negotiations or negotiating skills, um, learning how to negotiate um, tough, um, tough decisions or choices, time management problem solving, um, communication, and of course, um, collaboration and independence. Um, to conclude, um, successful individuals are constantly attending seminars, um, taking notes, 
attending classes, attending training, and learning new skills that will keep them marketable in their future careers. And I think um, the fact that for those of you attending the, this session, I would say it is an investment in your career um, because if you continuously strive to, to develop yourself, um, it will pay off. And what it does is when employees see that an um, when employers see that a potential employee is striving to learn new skills, um, get new tasks, jobs, and is someone who has that research mindset, that person or you as an individual will be someone worth investing in. And if they will invest in you, even if you, you want to leave, they will, they will try their best to retain you as an employee. So having that mindset is also important, which leads me to the, the third um, point successful people are lifelong learners um learning never stops so and a point that i would like to bring this up it it doesn't mean if you're a, um, a mc student that you don't try to go in the library and learn about png culture or if you're a medic if you're a png studies student that you don't try to read books about uh, medicine Reading a, a little bit about everything keeps you on the edge. Um, I read a book um, and it talked about um, CEOs who spent at least two hours, or at least a couple of hours per week reading everything and every everything and anything they get their hands on. The reason is that it gives them, it puts them um, on the edge. It keeps their mind sharp and when you talk, when you engage in conversation with anyone, um, having that curious mindset and um, learning new things will help you being engaged in um, conversations with everyone. If you're a business person and you, you try to read and learn about medical stuff, when you talk to a doctor, um, it helps you being engaged in the conversation as well. And in your career growth and in your professional network life, um, that will take you um, a long way. And the last point here is that employers are looking for individuals who are willing to learn and keen on solving problems, um, which is a very important component when they try to look for a potential employee for those in final year. When they try to, when they take you through the assessment, what they will try to separate is problem solvers um, from problem makers. So they will try to see if you are able to, to solve problems for the organization, or if you will add problems to the organization. And I think that will distinguish um, you having a job or you not having a job. So what can help contribute to this is having that um, learning and desire to learn about how to do research. And to finish, um, I would like to um, extract, uh, I would like to quote Antonio de Saint um, Expiry. Um, he lived from 1900s to the 1944, um, and he was a French aviator, author, and poet. Um, he said that. As for the future, your task is not to foresee it, but to enable it. And I think right now what every one of you have at the back of your heads is, um, how will I graduate? Um, but most importantly, how will I find a job? Okay, so having that, with that in mind, um, my advice to all of you um, this evening is that start researching. Um, start looking at the companies you want to work in, start looking at the organization, um, looking for contacts. It wouldn't hurt to send an email. Um, for those of you who might be afraid to send an email to the organization, now is the time to start sending emails and asking, um, is there a possibility I can come visit your office when I come home for holidays? Um, can I know more about your organization? What are the positions available? So in order for us to achieve the future, um, we have to enable it. Um, it is not something that we just foresee or we dream about. Um, so 
that is the end of my short talk um, this evening. And um, I would hand it back to um, the hosts for if there are any questions. Thank you. Test. Test. So once again, we thank Mr. Ezekiel for his time. He is actually still in the office. Yes, he's still in the office. He made time to stay back and give this session or give this talk to every one of you. So let's give him another round of applause for that. Did you enjoy listening to his speech? Did you learn something new? Are you hopeful? Are you looking forward to sending out emails, networking, find out more about the organizations that you want to work in? Yes, so you're already thinking ahead, right? Yes. What's one, one, what's one skill and attribute that Mr. Ezekiel mentioned about that can take you far, in, not just here as, in, as a student, but also in your professional career? Or shout it out. Yes, thank you, from the back. Shout it out. Communication. Communication, very good. Give him a round of applause. Okay, so Mr. Ezekiel has mentioned that he is now welcoming questions. If you have any questions or comments, please raise your hand and I'll come around with the mic and you can ask him questions. Um, so yeah, before you hand over the mic, questions can be relating to um, research, questions can be relating to um, experiences at Divine Word, um, how to find a job, um, how to survive the mess. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I, I hope, I hope, um, I love the rice, I love the rice there, so... <laughs> Okay, questions, comments? Right over here. Thank you. All right, uh, good night. Thank you for doing this presentation on behalf of the students. My name is Jason, given name, surname Ray, I'm the SRC president, so I would like to take this time to thank you for giving the session to our students. I would like to thank you for giving the session to our students. It's a very helpful program that we are trying to initiate for the students to learn more about how to acquire a job in the future. At the moment, I'm doing my final year, and I know as for myself, I feel that this program is very helpful, and the session that you gave us is very productive. So thank you for that. I have a question. So from your life as a student in here at Divine Word, you said that you were once a secre uh, secretary, a SRC secretary. So I would like to ask you this question. How does being part of such extracurricular activities in school help you in your field at the moment? Thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you, J Jason. Um, that's a very important question. OK. Um, just a quick show of hands. How many of you in the room are engaged in extracurricular activities? Sports. Um, can I have a quick show of hands? Okay, okay, that's good. That's excellent. So when when you apply for a job, um, I believe most of you have seen adverts um, about job applications. Most jobs will ask you if you have five years experience if you have three years experience if you have four experience and are they kidding we just finished four years of um, uni how will we have this kind of experience now in most cases they are looking for those who have experience but in very um 
I would say in rare cases, your experience in volunteering, your experience in engaging in extracurricular activities, it adds to the value that you bring to the table. Okay. Yeah, maybe you'll say I finished four years of I'm um, studying, but I don't have work experience. But being engaged in extracurricular activities, helping um, helping ICT or helping the library, helping the student mess, that will give employers the the indication that you are someone who likes to volunteer, you're someone who has the capacity to grow, the capacity to develop, and the capacity to contribute more to the organization. So um, for those of you who are in the SRC at the moment, um, congratulations um, on um, taking out that, that post. It is very challenging. Um, when I was the SRC, um, I usually sleep at 2, 3 o'clock in the night. Um, yeah, doing SRC work during the day and then doing school work in the night. And then on weekends, go into the library and sitting down. And I can tell you, sitting in the library alone pays off. So if if ever you if ever your friends make fun of you for um not hanging out with the crowd, um I believe me, investing in your education is very important and it pays because right now it is really hard to get a job. It is very hard. We have a hundred applicants come in, sometimes they send emails on a month a daily basis, and the job market out there is very challenging. Um so volunteering, um attending. Um, CLT's programs also, that extra certificate that you get will give you the edge. Knowing how to um, work an Excel book, knowing how to set a projector up, um, how to make phone calls, these skills will give you the edge when it comes to um, being selected for a position. Um, so the little things count. Um, I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Anyone else has a question or a comment? Please, there are no wrong questions. Raise your hand and I'll come to you with the mic. Questions, comments, anyone? Thank you, Mr. Ezekiel, for the for your time and for the presentation you have uh, presented for us this uh, for tonight. Um, so my question is: You, from your presentation, you mentioned um, curiosity, having the curiosity to to learn more, and so that will help us in our work. So I'm um, as for myself, I'm a clinical student. So um, when after year four for us clinical students, we have residency. So we 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 have two years residency, and after that, we look for a job. So sometimes um, when doing our work, we are just humans. Sometimes we we have ups and downs. And so my question is like in your working experience, sometimes if you feel like you have a lot of work to do and you don't have this um, motivation in doing your work. Sometimes you feel tired. So what strive? Or what what are some of the things that motivate you? Or what will I do if I if I feel like that there's lots of work or I feel demotivated? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I think I think that is um, another very important question. Motivation, right? Um, sometimes, sometimes we we try to find the answer um, why we are doing it, and I think having that um, motivating factor um, it helps you strive. Um, so, for my personal experience, when when I was um, when I was in uni, you know, and sometimes when you go to the mass, 
Um, you know, the food is great sometimes, the, the food is not so great the other times. Um, sometimes we love the food or not, or sometimes we go to sleep. Um, I mean, I go to sleep at times um, just drinking water or doing work. And I think the motivating factor is that um, what do you want to see? Where do you want to see yourself in five years? Or you're doing it for what? Are you doing it for fame? Do you want to help people? And I think finding your answer to your motivating factor that, that helps you do what you do, I think that will help you go a long way. Um, in other words, turn your anger or turn your, um, your tiredness as a motivating factor for you to do well. Um, and I think, I think individually finding what makes you think is important. Um, and in the workplace, when you don't have a motivation, I think you have to communicate. Communication is essential. I presented about it. Talking with your supervisors at all times. Um, and I think that is important. Uh, most people have burnouts. Um, people get tired. Um, some people get very sick. is because they, they don't communicate that to their manager. If you don't communicate to your manager, the manager will think that, oh, he's, he's losing interest or we should fire him. He's not working. But communicating everything across to your manager will, will help you um, see your way through as well. Um, I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Yes. Questions, comments? Excuse me. Good night. I have a question that I'd like to ask. Uh, uh, you said that when you were you as a student there, you engage in several areas. One of them is the SRC. So, apart from SRC, what are other areas that you engage to that? was able to boost your leadership abilities and uh, that made you uh, successful. Thank you, Dutcher. Thank you. Um, aside, from, aside from SRC, I was um, actively involved in my um, religious group as well. Um, on the weekends, I go to fellowship um, as well as junior Toastmasters. Okay, junior Toastmasters will will help you give you that edge um, when you go to the interview room. Um, I've, I've been in a couple of interviews and very um, talented people on CV, um, very talented people that are very bright, um, at times will freeze in the interview room, okay? Um, and that is, not, that is not new. A lot of people who are very bright in the classroom um, will freeze um, in the interview room. So um, speaking is an essential skill as well. Joining Junior Toastmasters um, will also not only help you um, develop your leadership roles in talking, but prepare you for employment when you sit in the interview room. Um, if it's a panel interview, you will have three people. Um, it can be the executive director, it can be the HR manager, and at at times, it can be the supervisor to the unit you will be reporting to that will be in a panel interview. If it's a one-on-one -on -one interview, it will be the HR officer or the HR associate. Um, so leading, going back to um, the question that, um, yes, engaging in different um, leadership roles and activities in university, it, it, it helps you keep active um, mentally as well. Um, just like exercise, um, you go to feel uh, you got from a ball, uh, you play rugby or you play soccer, you play basketball. I think exercising your body is just important as exercising your mind um, to be prepared for the um, the market, job market out there. So it comes back as well to time management, um, which is important. And it is a skill that everyone should learn. Um, because if we, if in the workplace as well, if we don't manage our time well, we will get an appointment to HR to to be asked why are you not doing your job. Um, so, um, um, I think that's my answer. I I hope I hope I answered your uh, question. Thank you. 
We'll take a last question. One more question. Ladies? Yeah, I, I think we need, to have, uh, we need to have some gender equality in the room. Ladies. We have one from the Vice President SRC, female. Thank you and good night. So my question is in relation to research. So um, we, at the end of the year, we go out to collect data for our research. And there are some of us who are shy and we feel intimidated when we go up to big people in big organizations. So. What is something that we can do to overcome such fears? Thank you. I think I think um, that has a two part answer to it and I will answer. Um, that is a point that I wanted to share as well. Um, thank you for bringing that up. I think research, um, research was what helped me um, get my first job. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to share a bit here. So when research in research, um, I was I was taught in research by Professor uh, Mareta Kulasemos. Um, she was my she was the instructor for the PNG Studies and International Relations um, Research Unit um, during my time. So um, I was I was lucky to have Professor um, teaching me in research. And something that Professor always tells us is that when you, in research, nobody knows as much as you do. The topic you select either in medicine, in business, um, in mathematics and computing, in social work, in PNG studies, in communication arts, in EH or in HM or MBBS, the topic that you pick is uniquely yours and you know because you will do literature review, you will read. And by reading a lot of literature, what it does, it's, it's going to give you that. Um, that confidence um, when you go out and you talk to people they will be listening to you because you are the researcher and knowledge is in your hands um, and when you go to the field preparing preparing to do research will give the the participants an indication that um, yes he or she knows what she's talking about so I will do the questionnaire and what that also does is that when you do your research, be very strategic about who you want to interview. Okay, be very strategic. If you want to do a research, a research in business, have a look at what are the what are the issues that the business world is facing. Research is all about filling that the gaps, the knowledge gaps. And if you're an individual who fills knowledge gaps, the people that you interview will keep an eye out on you, okay? So if you're doing a research on a topic and you go to an institution, that institution, 50%, 80%, 90% will say, okay, this girl or this um, student came to my organization and did research. Let's, uh, let's hold on to her CV. Uh, let's hold on to his CV. So be very strategic in where you conduct your research as well and being prepared. So how I got my um, first job, I did my research on um, perceptions and impacts of... Um... <laughs> did, the, did, the, did the genset go off? Yes, we just had okay. a blackout. Okay, but you can still see me, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So, um... <laughs> I remember my first time um, having a blackout. I was in, um, what is that, Fian or Brothers? Or one of those rooms. <laughs> okay. So, um, where was I? So 
being very strategic about um, your research as well will will help employers know um, your potential as well. And once you finish your research, they might call you up and say, come in for an interview, come in for a chat. Um, so I did my research on perceptions and impacts of cybersecurity and cyber theft on SMEs and companies in Eastern Britain. And I'm a PNG studies um, person, but I'm trying to look at a sort of social, economic, a bit of business, a bit of ICT. And what that helped me was that when I was applying for my first job um, to, to do a graduate, uh, the GDP for Deloitte, that topic in itself um, gave me the confidence and helped me secure a job, uh, my first job. So I was still in uni. Um, it was on May 15, 2019 that I got my offer. And then I ended the year, came back and graduated in um, March of 2020. So knowing, um, selecting your topic and researching more will give you that edge um, as well. And it will give you that confidence. Um, so that is something that I would like to share. I am looking forward to a lot of great research that will um, come out from development. Um, development has good researchers, so um, you're all lucky. Thank you. Mr. Saki, I will have a last question. All right, one more question. Uh, I just want to, I realized the importance of creating connections with people, like when I took our bus up to Visi Cup, Vicente La Cup in Goka, I saw uh, the alumni, the alumni chapter in Goka, they stepped in and assisted us to at least uh, run the operational management course for the boys, and I see that connection is one very important thing that we have, and the passing device that we actually have, so can you at least elaborate on how passing device help you in this state where now you are actually working and how are your connections with fellow Divine World X, Divine World students, how it, does it help you in your work and also how does this connection uh, come to uh, help you in your work and also how does uh, alumni organizations that we usually have for Divine World, we usually have alumni, so how does it assist or help you in your career as well? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, um, firstly, um, well, I'm not a really active member here in form of the official chapter, but the, the passing DOI, um, I think that is very important. And in your career, career pathway, um, having that strong connection with um, X divine words in your local geographic area will help you as well academically um, and also professionally. So what it does is that having a, a good support system can help you when you when you need information or when you try to um, apply. Um, and I have seen this, I haven't experienced it, but I have heard that if um, somebody knows, even if they are not divine word, but they know that you're a divine word graduate, I think you will sell well on the market. Um, and that is what I have had from managers who are not divine words um, alumni, but have, um, received um, divine web um, employees to work under them. And also I think um, having that connection helps um, helps um, me also to, to support other people. So for instance, if um, I have a classmate, so I have classmates or one era I'll stop. And if there's an opportunity that comes out, I would say, bro, um, there's an opportunity uh, um, that's coming up. I can send your CV. Um, I can go and ask what the requirements are. Um, I can send you the link, or I can print your papers. Um, and I think professionally having having um, divine word um, connections is is very important. So I would say um, treasure treasure the the connections you have. Um, yeah, basically um, that that that's my um, answer. And um, I think I think before we end, I think something that wasn't really asked is time management. Um, and for those of you who are still studying, um, sorry, Ryan, um, I'll just take two minutes.
<clears throat> so for those of you who are um, studying, I would say if you're in, if you hang out with a group of people, if you're in a relationship, um, be very serious about your academic studies. Um, I have seen people in long, um, long relationships um, during my era only to, to have their relationships broken um, just before graduation or even after graduation. And what that does academically to you, it, it messes up your, um, your mindset, okay? Um, and if you're in a relationship that is very um, toxic or demanding, um, draw the lines academically as well as uh, manage. Um, I would say the, the world is out there for you, um, but if you survive four years of uni, you can survive anything. Um, but my um, advice to those of you in relationships, manage your time. Uh, make sure that when it's time to go to bed, go to bed. When it's time for um, studies in the library, um, I would say go fill the library. Um, that is your opportunity to grow and excel. Um, and it, it will pay off. It will pay off. So I think that's my last piece of advice. And also um, for your close friends, find friends um, that are, that will help you study, that will help you grow. So um, yeah, that's 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 one advice I would like to give. Um, have good study buddies. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you once again, Mr. Sakia, for departing, not departing, sorry, <laughs> pardon me, for sharing your knowledge, wisdom, experiences with us. Who's happy they attended tonight? Are you happy that he shared about the mess? Yes. yes. So you know that there's someone who went through that too. I, I, I love the food for the record. I love the food. <laughs> I will attest to that he never misses mess. He eats a lot. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Mr. Ezekiel, thank you for your time. Before we close, we'll ask the SRC Vice President Female to say a few words and then we'll come to a conclusion. Yes. Um, um, before the um, SRC uh, Vice President speaks, um, I will later share my email address or a link with um, CLT um, for those who are willing to email me on um, advice on career, as well as um, for those who would want to um, just have, have me take a look at their CVs, um, to go through their CVs, I will provide an email link um or my email address so if anyone wants me to review their cvs i will try my best to have a look at cvs and then um communicate via email how to develop your cvs as well for final years and and that's for free, and, and that's for free. yes so please make use of the opportunity you have an alumni who is willing to assist you so please make use of this opportunity let's make welcome miss emma paro Thank you, Ms. Nonkas. And good night, everyone, once again. And good night, Mr. Esikia. So I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of the students to thank Mr. Esikia for taking time off work and sharing with us the role of research, research and its role in the workforce yes i wish i had we had this session earlier so that i could understand what research was for me because for a final year having research last year and not knowing its importance until just now it has really gave me a new perspective of why we should do research and why research is important and so to the year threes twos and ones i hope that this session has really imparted something in you and that it helps you understand research so that you can take research seriously when it comes your turn. Yes. And I'd like to thank the students. Yes, thank you for coming, for taking that time in coming to the auditorium and to listen to what Mr. K Mr. Esikia has to say 
in a way you are helping building yourselves and your career to enable yourself to be marketable in the workforce. Yes, that's all I have to say and you all have a good night. Thank you once again. Everyone just wave and say good night to Mr. Zakia. And uh, just, just everyone, please wake up early for mess. <laughs> Thank you once again, and you all have a good night.